He has seven private jets. He owns a mansion with a landing strip. He's a private pilot. He has a net worth of $250 million. He is John Travolta, and we're going to be taking a look inside his airplanes. Everything started with the Boeing 707-138B that John Travolta purchased from Qantas about 20 years ago. Back then, the actor had already established himself as one of Hollywood's greatest, and the company was happy to rent him the airplane. He had it for about five years before calling the chairman of the board of Qantas and asking him for a deal. The actor was paying about $5 million per year to own and operate the aircraft, which was becoming really expensive. He had taken the 150-seater plane, removed all the chairs, and created a wonderful 15-seater luxury mansion with wings. It had two bedrooms, one of which had a full-size bathroom, a sitting area, and an entertainment room, a galley with silverware and tableware for 34 people, and a menu you would only find at the most prestigious restaurants. The food served on board included shrimp cocktails, filet mignon, and countless desserts. So it's obvious why the actor wanted to share the cost with someone. So while on tour promoting his new movie at the time, Swordfish, he called the CEO of Qantas and asked him if the company would endorse him. He was even willing to pay them between $50,000 and $100,000 just so he could scrap the ordinary white and blue plane livery and replace it with the Qantas logo. It was always John Travolta's dream to fly a plane for Qantas. The CEO promised to think about it, and a month after the meeting, he called Travolta. The company decided to give Travolta his own 747. Obviously, this is not what he wanted because he knew nothing about the 747 aircraft. The actor's preference was the 707. So he made a counter proposition. He declined the offer for the 747, but he proposed they smash that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, he proposed the company fund the 707 he already flew, and in turn, he would endorse the company and become their ambassador. This was risky because it was soon after 9-11, and the world was still terrified to get on board an airplane. So the company thought, Having a famous spokesperson like John Travolta endorsing flying and Qantas could change how people feel about the aviation industry. And boy, they were right. They removed the white and blue livery on the outside of Travolta's plane and replaced it with the recognizable Qantas Red. They kept the name of the plane, Jet Clipper Ella, named after his two children, Jet and Ella. Hundreds of thousands of miles flown and about $100 million in promotional material later, Qantas was back on top and they had bagged a Hollywood superstar for only $5 million per year. Now that's what you call a good deal. Since then, the actor has added more planes to his collection, even though his acting career hasn't been so bright after the immense success in the 70s and in the 90s. This year, John Travolta posted a video on his Instagram account informing his fans that besides his 707 and 747 licenses, he has also received his 737 license, I just received my 737 license, and uh, it went very well, so uh, just sharing my moment with you. Basically, he told the world that he could fly three different planes without a problem. Speaking of flying without a problem, here's the actor taking off from Georgia and going to his home in Florida. Oh, and we almost forgot to mention that during one interview, he revealed that he can fly 11 different types of private jets, including the Gulfstream, Challenger, Hawker, Falcon, Lear, Citation Jets, as well as the de Havilland Vampire, as well as the Canadair CL-41 Tudor to Bond military jets. As for some of his other jets, the Belfast Telegraph has said that he has a Bombardier Challenger 601, three Gulfstream private jets, a Boeing 727, an Eclipse 500, and a Dassault Falcon 900. Then Super Yacht Fan revealed some additional information concerning Travolta's Challenger 601. They said that the jet was bought in 2011, but was actually made in 1988, and back then, it had the registration number November 392 Jericho Tango. As for the Eclipse 500, that one was made in 2007, and its registration number was November 218 Jericho Tango. But his love for planes didn't begin once he was super rich. He has been in love with flying ever since he was a little boy. At the age of 15, he began flying. Since then, for more than 50 years, he's been flying airplanes and loving every second of it. He's such a professional that he flew a long-distance flight from Florida to Ireland. Since he became affiliated with Qantas Airlines and as their ambassador, he agreed to surprise the Platinum One VIPs aboard one of Qantas flights to give them a special frequent flyer card himself. As soon as the star boarded the plane, 
people started taking out their phones and taking pictures of Travolta. Now, we should mention that the actor didn't fly the commercial airline. He just got on board and greeted everyone there. But it's not always sunshine and rainbows for one of the most popular celebrity pilots in the world. In 1992, he almost crashed his Gulfstream, November 728 Tango. In mid-flight, all of the electronics on board failed. He was flying towards Washington National Airport, but was forced to smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, he was forced to make an emergency landing. During the frantic landing, John Travolta almost crashed into a 727, and it wasn't Travolta's fault. The air traffic controller panicked, and the advice he gave to the actor pilot could have involved him in a horrific accident. And where would all those jets be if he had no place to park them? Unlike other rich people who parked their planes in airport hangars at the small local airport, John Travolta made the airport hangars come to him. That's because his house is sitting on an airport, and it has its own runway. To date, it's the largest and longest private landing strip in the world. And a huge chunk of the actor's net worth is due precisely to this 550-acre estate. Travolta didn't build the mansion for his family. He bought it from some of the richest people in the world. The first owner was a Vanderbilt. He had built the 7,700-square-foot home and surrounded it with 450 acres of gorgeous land. Then, Arthur Jones, the inventor of the Nautilus, purchased it. It was Arthur who decided it would be smart to build a giant runway for his charter Boeing 747 jumbo jet. He then added about 90,000 square feet of warehouses and manufacturing plants, a banquet hall suitable for some 400 people, and a refuge for African wildlife. Did you know that in the past, this wonderful property housed everything from elephants to crocodiles and a 600-pound gorilla named Mickey? However, Arthur Jones and his wife separated. Arthur then decided not only to sell the property, but to also make it into a community of houses where wealthy individuals could buy a property and have access to their private runway, reaching a length of 1.5 miles or 2.4 kilometers. And it's this that attracted the Pulp Fiction actor and his wife. The Jumbo Lair Aviation Estates, situated on Greystone Airport, were meant to have 38 homes. When Travolta bought the property, 21 lots had been sold. The dream was for a closed-off, wealthy community of people to have access to a private runway where they could land their planes without going to local airports. They would park their planes in front of their house and forego customs altogether. However, Travolta had a different plan. He bought all of the land outright for about $4.9 million. He's lived there since, and in 2019, he listed the estate for sale, all 550 acres of it for an astonishing $10.5 million. When sold, this property would double his investment. Currently, the home sports a 16-car garage, and unlike any other homes in this community, the Travolta home has two planes available at any time. Travolta's dream was to have a plane parked and waiting for him at all times. This way, he could take his wife out for dinner anywhere in the world. Well, to make this dream a reality, the couple hired architect Dana Smith to lead this project. They also hired a design team from California headed by Sherry James. The house's architecture is not modern. Travolta said it's more of a mid-century themed home. And at the front of the house, there's a vintage Thunderbird, which makes it all the more authentic. To build the house alone took them two years. But the total construction time of this masterpiece took six years. That's why Travolta and his now late wife Kelly Preston moved into the guest quarters for the next four years and supervised the building of this mega mansion. This goes to show that dreams do come true, people. Bye for now.